We're driving a 2023 Genesis GV60. It is a pure electric, they call it an SUV, it's really a hatchback. Coming up, I'm gonna defeat my old enemy, Pocket Bulk, with my finger and my face. But first, information explosion. Man, this is a weird car. We've got a lot to talk about. Let's begin with interior. There are really unusual shapes and material choices in here, and it all feels really luxurious and futuristic. It's a really appealing space. This glove compartment that's actually a drawer instead mm -hmm. yeah. to this material that looks like those athletic shorts, but it's metal, so that makes it classy. I thought that looked more like um, mechanized ostrich skin. Oh. Uh, but whatever it is, uh, unusual choices. This sort of silver streak that goes down the door panels that recalls the twin light bar motif on the exterior is also reflected on the piping of the seats. And boy, I feel like we just got to get right to it. The crystal sphere shifter. It seems really absurd when you first see it, but part of the issue with driving an electric vehicle is knowing when it's on versus in accessory mode. Mm -hmm. With this, it is very clear. In fact, it made me think of Ned Flanders and his saying about cider. If it's clear and yellow, you got juice there, fella. If it's tangy and brown, you're in cider town. That's right. So if you see a ball, you won't move at all. When the ball flips, you're ready to rip. Do you have a thought, kiddo? I can drive without even getting in the car. Oh, that's true. This thing is filled with technology, one of them being a, a exterior parking feature where you can use the fob to pull the vehicle into or out of narrow parking spots or garages. So easy, a child can do it. But back on task, talking about the interior, I think what's fun about here is that there's all these like unusual textures, interesting shapes, a lot of character, and yet still quite functional. Plenty of room. I mean, I fit um, reasonably well in the back seat, reasonably well because headroom is just a little bit tight for my long torso, especially when I recline the rear seats, but tons of legroom, flat floor. The rear recline is quite generous. The front seat's very adjustable, um, so you can get a very comfortable seating position, and you can recline them uh, very generously as well, which is the kind of thing that comes in handy when you're, let's say, hanging out at a charging spot, and you just, you just need a moment to chill because the world has gone mad, and this is your one brief, <laughs> brief respite from the craziness that surrounds you. Uh, uh, I might be breaking on the inside. <laughs> Does it show? <laughs> One thing I really like about the interior is the G for Genesis stitching on all the seats. I didn't and you even cannot no forget what brand you're in. I can. I didn't even notice that's what that oh. was. A very subtle G. But I'll also point out that we've got a little sunglasses holder down here. If you go even lower, there you've got a really great spot for your purse. Super handy. And there's a secret tunnel of sharing between the front seat and the back seat. <laughs> tunnel of sharing. That might be the most <laughs> heavy phrase I heard. It's a secret for being kind. Hey, why did you tell the <laughs> Shh. If you have a child who likes to make art, perhaps of a cat also making art, then uh, that is a great way to get it from the back seats to the front seat, provided you love fun. You do love fun, don't you? Okay, good. <laughs> what about getting the child seat attached and getting kiddo in and out? The latch points are exposed. The door opening is a little narrow for our seat, but we have it on the tallest setting. Mm -hmm. Kiddo, uh, any issues getting in and out of the car? Not really. I do love how the door has this little cup holder. Mm -hmm. And it's Oh yeah, you got cup holders in the back there because people in the back seat get thirsty too. And there's even seat heaters back there. If you weren't in a car seat, you could turn on the seat heater and it would keep your, your bum warm. As for cargo space, out back, there's 24 cubic feet available. Um, obviously that changes depending on where you have the rear seats angle. And they've smartly considered that with the cargo cover. Uh, we're uh, getting caramel <laughs> corn up front here. Please ignore the noise. Family life. Oh, and then there's also an underfloor uh, cargo space that you can keep the charging cable, your vehicle to load um, uh, connector can go back there, just at whatever else you need. If you need even more cargo space, there is a frunk up front, but it's 0.71 cubic feet, which means it's tiny. So basically you can put like 
half a pie up there or a, <laughs> uh, a wallet. As for safety, the IIHS has not um, rated the GV60 and I couldn't get the website for the NHTSA to open while I was doing my research, but I don't believe uh, they've tested a GV60 yet. Nonetheless, the platform that this is based on tends to rate very well safety-wise and there are eight airbags plus an entire suite of active driver assist, all the lane keeping assist, automatic emergency braking, that kind of stuff that you would want, plus blind spot warning and a little blind spot camera that shows up here in the gauge cluster whenever you turn on your turn signal. So overall, I think it's a very safe package. What do we think? Is the Genesis GV60 family friendly? Yay! Family friendly. Uh-huh. Rear window test. Almost all the way down. Almost. <laughs> Woo! Armrest test. Here I am driving in a comfortable eight and four, and this edge here where my elbow lands is a little bit hard and a little bit abrasive because of the stitching. Outboard, it's a little bit better, squishier. I'm gonna go 80% outboard and 65% inboard. Hey. Would you like to see more videos of me and my family reviewing cars, plus the occasional helicopter adventure? If so, feel free to subscribe. Style! Let's make this a fast one. Flying eyes are not like normal sunglasses. Look, you can do bendy stuff, and they're very lightweight, and they work great in a helicopter, but they also work great in our regular lives. Do you like your glasses? I like my glasses. We like our glasses. Do you want to like your glasses too? Click the link in the description below. Use the promo code Mike to save 10% off of flying eyes. Flying eyes! Not like normal glasses. <laughs> I like that it doesn't look excessively electric. Like it might be just a sporty little hatchback. Mm -hmm. Sorry, SUV. Wink. Up uh, front you have the twin light bar aesthetic that Genesis has been cultivating for a while here. One part I would change if this was my Genesis is I would probably paint that little triangle black so that it uh, looks a little more traditional, which is weird because I like unusual touches and generally. You're talking about the body color surround on the thing that is already black. Because right now yes. you're looking at B-roll and you're thinking it is already a black triangle, but you're talking about the area around it. I'm going to disagree and say that the entire purpose of that is that it extends the lines that come from either side of the front fascia. Uh -huh. So if you got rid of that, you'd lose that continuity, man. Okay. <laughs> A rare moment of disagreement in the Museo household. Ooh. Will our relationship survive? <laughs> <gasps> yes, yes it will. Okay. Whew. More weirdness in back. Uh, the C-pillar zigzag treatment. Uh, it's just weird. Are we going to disagree? I think it's quirky, but delightful. I don't have a problem with it. There's enough collective weirdness that you just sort of like accept it for what it is. It's triangles outside, circles inside. That's just how it rolls. <laughs> is that the design brief? It was as simple <laughs> as that? Like, I don't know, circles and triangles? What if we did one outside and one inside? Love it. <laughs> I will mention the color is Hanoma Mint. That's named after a bay in Hawaii. And I think it looks super fantastic. They also have a few other fun colors um, and then some boring colors if uh, you feel like uh, driving something that's boring. And then- Dignified? We'll go dignified. That is a much more respectful way of saying <laughs> that. I uh, also note that the charge port for the GV60 is on the right rear quarter panel. That means if you're charging it, in a lot of places you're going to need to back in, so get used to backing in. But again, you got that really good 360 camera system, so you probably won't hit stuff. What do you guys think? Do you like the look of the Genesis GV60? If yes, if no, tell us in the comments. If you're curious what we're doing between YouTube videos, you can always give us a follow over on Instagram in motion. Everywhere we go, we turn because we live in the mountains and so we turn. <laughs> and I really like driving this thing around in a mountainous environment. I will say that at a very, very um, zippy clip, it feels like it might be a little bit inclined to understeer, which is the most generic automotive journalist complaint. And it's not even really a complaint. Um, I just, it's a little less hard edged steering than uh, some of the other vehicles I've driven recently. But nonetheless, you can drive this thing very quickly and have a very good time doing it. And it's a balanced package too. Um, it feels uh, sporty. Uh, when you're steering, and it also has plenty of power. Whee. Woo! My goodness, that wow. is fun. That is nausea inducing fun. Let's uh, change things up a little bit here. You've got some controls on the steering wheel. So I'm going to go to drive modes and put it into sport, which is right over here on the left side. And then on the right side, you've got this boost button. And if you hit that, you get 10 seconds of uh, extra power. And uh, oh, here we've got 10 counting down. <laughs> Wow! Oh my gosh! 347 miles per hour. 
Yes, which is great because that's below the speed limit of uh, something higher than 47. We'll just say 48 miles per hour. I have read that from a stop, this will do zero to 60 in 4.9 seconds. I'm just gonna pause here for a second, activate boost. You ready to go fast, kiddo? Head up, ready? Here we go, three, two, one. Yeah, okay, and braking. Woo! So the story there is that uh, the GV60 is right quick when you want it to be, and I really like this little boost function. It just adds a little bit more interaction. People complain about the loss of the manual transmission, but this is like mm. something to do, and I kind of enjoy it. Maybe there could be more feedback through the steering wheel, but nobody cares about that, so it's a really fun car to drive. At the same time, I think ride quality is quite good. This has a feature called Road Preview, which we experienced recently in the G80 Electrified, which basically uses a camera to read the road and adjust the suspension accordingly. That's on the performance trim we're driving. If you go with the base trim, you don't get that, but I'm sure it still drives just nicely. So yeah, I'm finding a lot to enjoy driving the Genesis GV60. Oh, Wee. that is a good time. But what does Evie think? Evie's at the wheel. How do you like driving this thing? So I love how zippy it is from a stop. I keep inadvertently peeling out. Prompt electric torque and all the power comes on so quickly that you look like a mad woman yeah. driving around <laughs> having a crazy time. <laughs> That's part of the fun you can have driving an electric car. Do you feel comfortable driving the GV60? It's small, it's low to the ground, and despite the tendency for me to peel out, I do feel really comfortable driving this. What about visibility? Any issues? So over my right shoulder, there's a huge blocky C pillar that's hard to see around. And the belt line is high and then rises even higher as you go towards the rear. Mm -hmm. So visibility isn't its strongest suit. It is a really good thing that this comes uh, with such uh, excellent visibility via the 360 cam, yes. including that kind of virtual spin you around, see around the entire vehicle angle. Even though visibility out isn't awesome, technology makes up for the shortcomings. Yes. All right, well, sweetie seems pretty happy. I'm getting back in the driver's seat. Overall, there is a lot to like driving the GV60, and I didn't even mention earlier, so you've got these paddles up here on the uh, steering wheel that you can use to adjust the regenerative braking intensity. And if you go to maximum and activate something called iPedal, which is a one-pedal drive mode, let me just bring it to a complete stop using the iPedal function. My foot is not on the accelerator, and we're gonna come to a gentle, graceful, smooth stop. Let's see how smooth it is. That's very smooth. That's very good. Neela's full throttle acceleration. Wee. Wee. I like this car. And you know what I like? Patreon. Hey, patrons, thank you for your support. We love chatting with you guys over there. And we love giving you early access. I was about to hiccup while I was speaking. <laughs> I think it Could like you tell? Vomit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so filled with emotion, and it comes out in a variety of ways. Thank you, patrons, for your support. Onward to emotion factor. So many positive emotions from the really stylish interior to the exterior to the speedy driving to saving money on gas. I'm just filled with emotion, you guys. And I think that is a very reasonable thing. Not that I'm here to judge the correctness of your emotions, but yeah, I think there's um, plenty of ways you could feel emotionally dazzled by the GV60. All the cool technology and just the weird specificity about its design. If you're feeling emotionally drawn to buy a Genesis GV60 of your very own, I'm guessing you're gonna need to sell your current car first. Whether you wanna know how much your current car is worth or how much you should pay for for your next car, let Kelly Blue Book be your pricing guide. If you have any questions about vehicle pricing, use the link in the description below. Kelly Blue Book is there to help. Charging onward to remarks. In the beginning of the video, I teased that I was gonna slay my old nemesis pocket bulk with uh, the power of my finger and my face. I hate having a bunch of extra crap in my pockets. The Genesis GV60 helps me do that because it incorporates biometric technology. So on the B pillar, there is a camera and you can set it up. And, and the setup, by the way, is very, very easy. Um, when they dropped off the car, they just ran me through it. It took like a minute and uh, reads your face. So you can get into the vehicle with that camera on the B pillar. And then once you're in here, there's a little um, fingerprint sensor and it's like, okay, yeah, you can start it up now. So you can use biometrics to get in and start your vehicle and uh, spend the day at the beach and you never have to worry about stowing a fob and a sock uh, in a shoe and hoping that a crab hasn't run away with it. 
We have a dual 12.3 inch screen. One is on uh, gauge cluster duty. And then the one over here is the infotainment zone. I enjoyed using the touch screen interface. There's also physical buttons down here, which is a bit far if you're going back and forth. But honestly, I never use these buttons. They are a little bit redundant because, yeah, the um, basic interface here is really quite good. The reach for touching the touchscreen isn't that far, um, unlike some other Genesis's we've driven recently. But if you want, you can just use this little uh, controller down here. And uh, one thing I do like is that this is different enough from the drive selector that you won't confuse them, unlike the Genesis G80 Electrified that we drove recently. Another feature that um, you can probably be creative in how you use it is something called vehicle to load. And uh, what happens is that there's a little accessory, you put it into the charge port, and then uh, you just have like a three prong outlet that you can use to power whatever you want. Phone, lamp, e-bike. What would you charge with your vehicle to load adapter? Tell us in the comments. So there are two power options. With the base advanced trim, uh, you get a little less horsepower and torque, but you get a little bit more range. With the performance trim, it's the exact opposite. The performance trim also has the exact same battery as the base trim, uh, but it gets bigger brakes uh, because you're gonna be getting a little bit extra speed there. Both versions of GV60 can charge at up to a 350 kilowatt rate, and at that speed, it can go from 10 to 80% charge in only 18 minutes. If you use a 240 volt level two outlet, it can go from 10 to 100% in about seven hours. Sweetie? Yes. Can I give you a trim recommendation? Why, sure. Hooray! Our trim recommendation is based on which trim gives you all the features you would regret not buying, but at the lowest possible price. I'm gonna recommend going with the advanced trim, which starts just under $59,000. It's still really loaded with heated, ventilated, leather memory front seats, four USB-C ports, a 17-speaker Bang & Olufsen audio system, a smart liftgate, standard Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, although both are wired instead of wireless, a wireless charge pad, and smart key access, something I will not live without. The only thing you're missing when you uh, skip the performance trim is adaptive dampers, heated rear seats, and a microfiber headliner and yeah, more power. Among the competitive set, we got fancy EVs like the Tesla Model Y, maybe the Cadillac Lyric or the Audi Q4 e-tron. If you wanted to save about $20,000 or so, you could go with the Kia EV6 or the Hyundai Ioniq 5, which are both built on the same platform as the GV60 we're driving. Another competitor worth considering is the Mustang Mach-E from Ford. If you're curious what we thought about driving the Mustang Mach-E, click up here and you can see our review. The Mach-E has a lot going for it. We found it very fun to drive. And also, it's built in North America, which means as the uh, federal tax incentives shift moving forward, the Mach-E should still be eligible for that $7,500 federal tax incentive. GV60 is built in South Korea, so probably no tax incentive. Did we miss any remarks? If so, tell us in the comment section. Synopsis! In thinking about the essence of the Genesis GV60, it is fancy, it is confident, it is delightfully weird. To me, it is the Jeff Goldblum of electric vehicles. If you would like to see more videos of me and my family reviewing cars as a family, feel free to subscribe. If you're curious what we're doing between YouTube videos, you can always give us a follow over on Instagram. Family, I think we've done a good job reviewing the Genesis GV60. May I have a five? Ow! And a five? Huh. And you, come get that five. Hey!